This video is about what sound is and how we hear it. I'm going to talk about the physical basis of sound, as well as how our ears detect that physical stimulus, and how our brains convert that physical stimulus into an electrical signal used by neurons. Sound is what's called a pressure wave. It involves molecules being compressed together and spaced apart, something like this. A sound wave in air involves areas in which the air molecules are quite dense, and this is called the compression phases of the sound wave. And they alternate with areas where the air molecules are less dense, like there, and there, and there. And those regions are called rarefaction. You can make a graph of the air pressure versus time, and it looks something like this. So an air wave like this, which has areas of high uh, density of molecules, followed by low density of molecules, the air pressure would be plotted like so. And we can characterize this sound wave as having two features, having a wavelength and having an amplitude. Sound waves enter the ear canal and cause vibration of the eardrum or tympanic membrane. Vibrations of the eardrum are then transmitted through bones of the middle ear, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, these three bones here, here, and here. Transmit the vibrations to another membrane located deep within your inner ear called the oval window. Behind the oval window is a fluid-filled cavity, kind of a snail-shaped structure called the cochlea. The bones of the middle ear serve to provide a mechanical advantage, taking a pressure wave in air and allowing it to create a pressure wave in, in fluid inside the cochlea. The cochlea is where these vibrations are transformed into a neural signal. And here's how this works. The vibration of sound, the air pressure wave, comes down the ear canal and causes the eardrum to vibrate. The bones of the middle, middle ear then transmit those vibrations, and here's the oval window. The oval window then vibrates. And this section of this diagram is the cochlea, the section right here. And it is unfurled so that you can visualize um, how exactly this works. So the vibrations are, have been transmitted into the fluid inside the cochlea. And they cause a membrane inside the cochlea to oscillate in time with the, those vibrations. This membrane is called the basilar membrane. It is free floating at one end so that it can oscillate uh, in the fluid. It is lying just underneath a more rigid membrane called the tectorial membrane. And as the basilar membrane oscillates, it causes some special cells that are sitting on top of the basilar membrane to kind of bump into that tectorial membrane. And so in the next slide, I'll show you how that works. So in the next picture, you're gonna be looking at a cross section here through this um, uncoiled cochlea. So looking at that cross section, here's our tectorial membrane, here's our basilar membrane. As sound enters this structure, the basilar membrane starts to move up and down. These hair cells located on top of the basilar membrane have little cilia or hairs that are embedded in the tectorial membrane. And as the basilar membrane goes up and down, those hair cells bend back and forth. They're kind of scraping the roof formed by the tectorial membrane. And this is how auditory transduction occurs. We've got our oscillating basilar membrane and our rigid tectorial membrane and hair cells riding that wave on the basilar membrane. As those hair cells ride that wave, their hairs deflect, and it looks something like this. As the basilar membrane moves up and down, the hairs deflect back and forth. What is special about those hairs deflecting back and forth is what happens next. It involves ion channels being opened and closed by those deflections. The mechanical forces affecting the hairs cause them to open and close ion channels that allow two positively charged kinds of ions, potassium or calcium, to flow into the hair cell. That in turn changes the electrical potential inside the neuron and serves to convert that mechanical signal into an electrical one. One thing that's missing here is that there's really nothing in the way that sound waves are converted into an electrical signal in neurons that involves anything about the spatial location of the stimulus. A sound coming from here and a sound coming from here enter the same ear canal 
they pass along that ear canal, they cause the eardrum to vibrate, and so forth. As the sound wave enters the ear canal, information about where it might have come from is lost. It is no longer a characteristic of that sound wave. But nevertheless, we are able to hear where sounds are coming from. How does the brain localize sounds if it doesn't have image-forming ears to help it do so? That's what I'll talk about in the next video.